Hey! Hey, we're Mr. Thomas's favorite students from S3, and we're here to wish you all luck with your national five vectors. Peace, Peace out. out! That was so awkward. It's time for maths with Mr. Thomas. That's right, this is the very first lesson in the vectors chapter. This is just an introduction to vectors, so I'm just covering the basics. We're looking at naming vectors, woo! Equivalent vectors, yeah! And multiplying by a scalar, oh yeah. So, the basics, let's begin. So the first question on everybody's mind is what is a vector? Well, if you think about different things that can be measured, you get two different types of things that can be measured. One of them is a, Haddy, help me out, scalar. Brilliant, you get scalars. And the other one is a, Fiona, vector. Brilliant, so you get scalars and you get vectors. They are things that can be measured. So what is the difference between them? Well, a scalar, Lucy. Yeah, brilliant. A scalar is a quantity with a magnitude, which is a size. And why is that different from a vector? Well, a vector also has a size, which we'll now call a magnitude, but it's also got a direction attached to it. So let's look at some examples of each. So examples of a scalar. Anya, give me one of them. Brilliant. Time is a scalar. Seven hours, three weeks, four years, a century. There is a size there, but there is no direction. For example, the time taken for Sophie Boswell, the smartest pupil I've ever taught, to win the Nobel Prize. Time is a scalar. Something else. Ali. A speed. Yeah, brilliant. Speed is also a scalar. 13 meters per second, 70 miles per hour. The direction is not important. You can change the direction. The speed will still stay the same. The direction is not important when it comes to speed. The example here, the speed of Ryan running away from the police. The way he does every Saturday night. Another one. Ifra, give us another one. Lum. Brilliant, yeah, length would also be a scalar. You could have the length of something as 22 meters, six centimeters, 12 inches. The direction is not important. The example that I'm giving here is the length of this pen. What pen? This pen, woo! The direction is not important. No matter which way it is facing, it is still going to be the same length. It doesn't matter how you turn it. Woo! So at length would also be a scalar. Some examples though with vectors. Rejwan, hit me with a vector. Gravity. Brilliant, yes, gravity is a vector. If you think about planet Earth, well, gravity acts on everything. Gravity has a certain size, a certain strength, and it's pulling everything towards the center of the Earth. There is a direction there because it's pulling everything in. Another example, Lee. Force. Yes, brilliant. Force would also be a vector. If you are pushing something, then you would be pushing it with a certain force. And the force is going to be measured in newtons, but there's also a direction attached to that. You will be pushing it in a certain direction. Or the example that I'm giving here, the force applied to a snooker ball. Again, there's going to be a size. You're going to hit that with a number of newtons. That's going to be the force. But there's also a direction attached to it. Woo! Brilliant. And let's do one more example of a vector. Gosha! Velocity! Brilliant. Velocity is also going to be a vector. You could be in a plane flying at 400 miles per hour, flying in a bearing of 50 degrees. You need that direction as well as the speed for velocity. If your direction changes, then so will the velocity. So to sum that up, things that you can measure, if there is a size, and it's just a size, purely a size, then it's going to be a scalar. But if there's a direction attached to it as well, then it is a vector. But how do we name vectors when they're written down? Let's look at that. So to name a vector, you can do it in one of three ways. Three ways? Yes, three ways. Here is how it is done. 
So, you may be given a vector which looks something like this. Imagine it as a journey going from A to B. Well, because it's a journey going from A to B, you can see the arrow there pointing in that direction. We've gone from A to B. We can call that vector a ball. Yeah, you can call it A, B. And the way you write it is you use the letter at the start of the journey and the letter at the end of the journey. So we started with A, we ended up with B, and you put it down in that order, the start and the end. What we also do, notice here, there is an arrow above A, B. So we always have the arrow going in this direction and we just put it above A, B, which means we went from A to B. You never ever have the arrow going back the way. The arrow is always going towards the right. How else can you name a vector? Well, if you look at the vector, what you'll have sometimes is just a lowercase letter beside it. And you can either have the lowercase letter written in bold, but you wouldn't write it that way. That's how it would be in a textbook. But if you were writing that down, if you're writing it by hand, what you would do is you would just put the lowercase letter and then underline it to show it is a vector. So this vector here is vector U. It may appear as a bold letter in a textbook, but if you were writing it down and using it for some reason, you would be writing the lowercase letter and then underline it. So you'd either use this one up here or this one down here. So to sum up, you can either use the letters at the end of the line segment. It is the capital letters, so A, B. You can use a lowercase bold letter, or you can use a lowercase underlined letter. That is how you name vectors. Woo! Yeah, don't call them Kevin, or Brian, or Hamish, or Tabish, or Gosha, Louise, Samantha, Rejwan, Riyadh. Don't do that. That's silly. Let's look at some examples then. So if we were to name these vectors here, we can see we've got this vector to begin with. It is going from D to F. How do we know it's going from D to F? Well, we can see this arrow. It is pointing in this direction. And because the vector is going in this direction, it started at D, it ended at F. So we would write down the letters D, F. And we've got this arrow above them to show it is a vector. What else could we call it? Well, we could call it underlined A because there's an A beside it. Hello, I'm A. So we can just put an A. So you can either use DF or just A. And suppose if you were typing into a computer, working on a wee project, you could also put a lowercase A and put that in bold. Next example, this one here. What would you call that? Wild bold. Brilliant, yes, you can see this vector is coming down in this direction. So where did it start? It started at Y. And where does it finish? It finishes at B. So we can call it YB. And remember, you put the arrow going towards the right above it to show it's a vector. What else could you call it, Freya? I call it B. Brilliant, yeah, you can call it also call it B, lowercase b, underlined. And again, if you're doing a wee project on the computer, you could also put a lowercase b and underline it. Uh, but most people will just be writing it by hand. So lowercase b and then underlined. Woo! Let's try another one. Uh, this vector here, what would that be? Oh, I think that's going to be NG. Does everybody agree? Ooh, quite a few people disagreeing. Why do you disagree? Yeah, perfect. The vector is not going from N to G, so we do not call it NG. The vector is going in this direction, and we can tell that because the arrow is pointing up the way over here towards N, which means the vector started at G and ended at N. Ba -ba -ba -ba! Which means instead of NG, we would call it GN. Ba -ba 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 -ba. So, that is what you would call it, or we could also call it lowercase c, gn or c. Woo! And finally, this vector here. We could call it d. Yeah, you could call it d, is lowercase d underlined, or you could call it. Would it be ct or tc? Hands up for tc. You're wrong. It is ct. The vector is going down in this direction. You can tell from the arrow. So it started at c, ended at t. So it would be ct. Woo! My initials. That is how you would do it. Moving on, let's look at equivalent vectors. What does equivalent mean? Safa. Equivalent means they're the same. They're equal. 
Thank you, Safa. You are perfectly right. Yes, it means they are identical. They are the same. So, how do you get vectors that are the same? Well, the rule is vectors are the same. They are equal if they have the exact same length and the exact same direction. So, for example, these three vectors here, they are equal. They are equivalent vectors and they are the same because this vector here, u, is the exact same length and the same direction as this vector that goes from k to r. Or in other words, kr. So u is the same as kr and it's also the same length and same direction as this vector, ml. So because ml and kr are the same as vector u, they would be equal vectors or equivalent vectors. They have the same magnitude, size, length, and the same direction. Woo! Okay, for all you brainy people out there, are these two vectors equal? You ready? ba -bam! What do you think? Oh, a few people saying yes, a few people saying no. Most people saying no. Why are most people saying no? Well, the people are saying no, they are right. They are not equal vectors. And the reason is the size is the same, but the direction is not the same. This vector here is heading up in this direction. It's going from A to E. Come back. But this vector here is heading down the way. Come back. So they are not the same direction. So they are not equal vectors despite being the same length and despite being parallel. So they are not equal. However, ba -ba -ba -bam, if you take this vector and imagine instead of the arrow pointing down the way, imagine if the arrow is pointing up the way instead, would they then be equal? Yes, they would. And they would then be equal. So because it's pointing in the opposite direction, you could say that that vector AE would be the same as the negative of vector P. If you take the negative of a vector, it just means it goes in the opposite direction. So AE would be the same as the negative of vector P. In other words, the opposite direction of P. And finally, let's look at multiplying vectors by a scalar. So Riyad, to multiply vectors by a scalar, how do you do it? Well, a scalar is just going to be a number, so it's just going to be changing the length. Yeah, you are perfectly right. Yeah, that's exactly what you do. If you multiply a vector by a scalar, well, the direction remains the same, unless you multiply it by a negative, uh, but it's the size, it's the length of the vector that is going to change. So, for example, zzz, let's look at these. So let's start off with vector u. You can see u has a certain length or size or magnitude and it's got a direction. It is coming up in this direction. Let's say we were asked to sketch 2u. How do you do it? Well, you're right. If you have to sketch 2u, it means you're just going to sketch two of these. So you'd have one of them and then you'd have another one. So you'd have one vector u and then you would have another vector u. So you just have two of them. There's one of them, there's two of them. Don't put the arrow on twice, just get rid of both arrows and then put the arrow on once. So it's the same direction, but double the length because we're multiplying vector u by two. Bum, bum, bum. If you've got three u, what would that look like? Oh, that would just be three of them, wouldn't it? It would indeed, yeah, you would just have three of them. So you'd have one vector u, you would draw that. Then you would draw another vector u just on the end of that. And then on the end of that, you would draw another vector u. So really, you would end up with three vector u's. So you've got one of them here, one of them down here, this one in the middle. It's three overall. Don't put on three sets of arrows showing the direction. Just get rid of them. And in the middle, just show that it is the same direction as vector u. For negative u, have you drawn negative u? Well, that's what you said on the last page. That's just the same size, but the opposite direction. Yeah, you're perfectly right. So negative of vector u is just vector u, but going in the opposite direction. So instead of going up in this direction, it will be coming down the way. So all you do is you flip the arrow and you end up with that. And as it says there, it will be parallel. So it's just heading in the opposite direction. And negative to u. Well, the negative 
will put it in the opposite direction. Yes, you're perfectly right. And you will double the length. Well done, Mr. Irwin. You are right. To you means you are doubling the length, but the negative means it's going in the opposite direction. So really, you would end up with pretty much the same answer as this one, but instead of the arrow pointing up the way, the arrow will be pointing down the way. So you end up with something like that. And you can see it's the same as vector u, but there's two of them. And the opposite direction. Woo! That has been an introduction to vectors. It is just looking at naming vectors, equivalent vectors, and multiplying vectors by a scalar. Try some of these questions in the TJ National 5 book, or on Zeta Maths, or any other textbook you like, but see how well you get on with these. And if you get on brilliantly with them, move on to the next lesson, and well done. <coughs> Woo! Mabel, Daniel, Bethany, Mahiba, let's hear your introduction one more time. It was so good. Hey! Hey, we're Mr. Thomas's favorite students from S3, and we're here to wish you all luck with your National 5 Vectors. Peace, Peace out. out! That was so awkward. It may have been awkward, but it was so good. Thank you very much. See you again.